Hi, in a previous video I showed you how to set up Windows 11 on a QEM virtual machine with TPM and Secure Boot on Ubuntu 20.04 and I made a video about it and um, some notes um, and basically what I'm going to do is go through a couple of quick tips um, to actually um, remove um, some of the options for the bootloader um, Basically, um, what we want to do is deselect the um, SATA CD ROM 1 and 2, um, which were the Windows um, installer and the VERT WinIO file. So basically, after creating the, um, the VM and getting it all set up, you come into the boot options when the machine's powered down and just un unselect everything apart from the VERT IO disk. So basically that stops the um, press any key um, option that comes up in the bootloader that relates to the um, vert win tools. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is coming down to the video. And by default, um, it's set to QXM. Uh, what is it? Um, QXL, sorry. Um, and what we're going to do is change that to vert IO. So that should give us better performance. So come into the video, um, change the model to um, VertIO and deselect um, 3D acceleration and then apply those changes. And if I just boot the machine up, um, there you go. So we don't get the boot any key, uh, press any key option coming up. You can see the little, um, Circle going round for the Windows boot, and there we go. So that's Windows 11 um, running with the um, VertIO um, driver. So um, here's my cursor. Um, it's pretty nippy. Um, there's the File Explorer. Um, open up Firefox. And let's go across to YouTube. I'm going to spell YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll just come across to um, a video and play a video. Um, let's just go for Distro Tube. Um, gentle introduction. And basically, what I'm going to do Talking. is. Um, Come across to the settings here, and you'll see by default it's set to 480. If I whack that up to 1080, 60 frames a second, and then I'll put it full screen and play it. Um, it seems to be. Here we go. So a few weeks ago, Linus and Luke from Linus Media Group, which is the parent company behind the Linus Tech Tips you can channel there, on YouTube, um, that's playing these guys really decided smoothly. they were going to do a Linux 1080p, challenge. They were both um, going to switch away from Windows. Um, and again, this is a virtual machine. Um, so a couple of things to note. Um, you can sign into the Windows Store um, in the VM. That's not a problem. Um, the one issue I have had is trying to figure out how to get um, the Windows subsystem for Linux to work. Um, and what I'll just do now is um, shut this down. Shut down. And I'll show you um, what the issue seems to be. Come to the uh, CPUs. By default, it's set to copy host CPU configuration. And uh, if you uncheck that, um, you'll get this option here, model host model. Um, and even if you, if you enable this um, and try and install w, um, WSL, uh, the Windows Subsystem Linux, um, the VM won't boot. And what I found is um, I can install the Windows subsystem for Linux, but only if I change the model to either Skylake client no TSX dash IBRS, uh, which is quite an old processor, but I think it's one of the more recent ones listed here, or um, changing to hypervisor default. And what that does is that sets it to um, 
QEMU 64 bit um, and uh, I won't apply these changes um, but that basically will allow you to um, install Windows subsystem for Linux um, and boot and boot into it and boot back into Windows um, but then when you try and um, run Ubuntu you get an error um, an error code uh, which I think is related to virtualization not being enabled in the BIOS um, because you're selecting a different um, CPU and so basically it, it doesn't work um, and I haven't figured out a way around that so that's just a couple of um, little tweaks to add to the, um, the VM so first one is coming into the boot options and deselecting everything apart from the virt Vert IO disk and basically um, CD ROM 1 and 2 are these, and that's again the Windows 11 ISO and the Vert, Vert IO Win ISO file. Um, so once you've basically set everything up, um, you don't need those in the boot menu. Um, and the second thing we did was we came into the video um, and we changed it from QXL to Vert IO. And made sure that that's not selected and applied it um, and that basically should give you a bit better performance um, and also remove um, the annoying prompt that comes up on the um, bootloader saying press any key and if you do that that would kind of boot into the um, avert um, win tools which you don't want to do so that's a few um, tweaks um, for Windows 11 and um, Still trying to figure out how to actually get the Windows subsystem for Linux working. Um, basically, as I said, it just gives you this error, um, which I think is related to the um, virtualization not being able, enabled in the BIOS for the CPU, and um, because it doesn't seem to work if you have copy host CPU configuration selected or host model, um, it just won't boot um, the, the virtual machine. Um, after you've installed Windows Subsystem for Linux, it will no longer boot. And the only way to get it to boot again is to change the CPU to either Skylake Client, no TSX, dash IBRS, um, or the hypervisor default, um, which will set it to um, the CPU of, I think it's QEM64. Um, um, and basically that will allow you to boot back into Windows. Um, but Trying to run Ubuntu, even if you install it from the store, um, won't work. It will give you this um, error message um, saying something's not enabled um, for it to work. So that's just a couple of um, tips about getting um, Windows 11 working um, in a QEM virtual machine. Um, here's the original video, um, and here's the notes um, go with that original video. And here's the um, Windows 11 KML file that um, I'm using with with this um, virtual machine here. This is the um, this is this KML here. Um, so you can actually have a look through here and um, basically um, you know check the options if you want to um, on your virtual machine. So that's just a, a couple of tweaks that I come across um, setting up a Windows KVM on Ubuntu. Um, and yeah, it works absolutely fine. You can sign into the Windows Store. You've got audio working. The only thing, as I said, is the Windows subsystem for Linux isn't working because it's basically using a nested virtual machine. So that's just a few tips and that's all for now.